Hi. <laughs> Hello. You're comfortable with this. You're comfortable being seen. <laughs> yes. Look, I even just starting this and I get nervous. <laughs> Isn't that funny? What is it about? There's nothing that's changed except this weird, you know, device doing this. What's that recording thing that makes me all nervous? It's all good. I know. It's all good. It's all good. I, I will start with a comment you made. Bring it to you and look at it. The fear, the evil, what we think of yes. as evil. And I wrote in my book, and what I sent in my book around was mostly to Caucasian whites. Right. And it is a proclamation and an invite to come without fear and look at it. <laughs> and I sent it around when I was three or six years old. And the first funerals that I went to, my mother took me to, one was the pastor's wife and one was my grandmother and it was so many up until maybe I was a teenager and it was something about a black funeral that was <laughs> that Life was um, I remembered from the age of those years how blacks would have funerals. And I revisited it after I had gone and became an adult and went to white funerals. And I noticed there was some missing parts because I was a therapist um, working the crisis line in Atlanta. And uh, all the clients who had grief issues with death were 99% white and it dawned upon me it's the grieving process and then I brought that into diversity and in culture so that there's a difference in how people in this there, country who are white and people in this country who are black grieve from what yes, you experienced and I remembered as a child how we had funerals Right. And how you let a loved one go. Um, there was a wake, and they actually brought the body right, so to it. the house. Mm -hmm. It was a, a way of the person who was deceased saying a last goodbye mm -hmm. to their home. Mm -hmm. And they did that for everybody. Mm -hmm. And then the next day would be the funeral. And we will go into the funeral, and there they open the body to be viewed. And there was wailing and weeping. Um, and they gave the family and everybody else so much time to do this. Right. And then they would start the funeral. Um, but it wasn't over. They would go through the whole process of talking about the life and this person and then the preaching. And lo and behold, after the minister spoke, they would reopen the casket for the last time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Not only did they reopen it, but they would bring it right up to the family mm -hmm. to where me as a little boy, the casket would touch my legs and it was grieve and let them go. It was take a look at it and they brought it right before you. Right before you. And what I have in my book is white people 
bring it before you. Even though it's hard, take a look at it. Take a look at, not out of guilt, but without fear and without guilt. Just take a look. Without making excuses, take a look at what might have happened over these centuries toward not only blacks, but Native American. Not only Native American, but the sexism that have been used toward women. Not just the sexism, but take a look at what has been done to this continent and all over the earth and how we have treated the earth I call the earth mama. Take a look and then without excuse because some of the, the excuses that have been said to me is oh but we weren't back there then when they did blacks this way and when they did blacks the other way. We don't need we we don't need excuses. My mother used to tell me she would not allow excuses in her house. And her main statement was you have to understand son when Jesus left the earth he took all the excuses <laughs> back with him. And that went so far. So without excuse but also without guilt and without shame, come forth and just take a look at it and right. wallow in it. And in the wallowing, there is a cleansing. There is an order, there's a process of healing and that's what we need. And so I came forth with this plan because I, thought that all the other mm -hmm. diversity plans is looking at somebody else. <laughs> so <clears throat> especially white Americans have never taken the time to look at themselves because they've so been so busy looking at everybody else. And the nation cannot behold what we might have done to cause this. I noticed this the day of 9-11. I was in a meeting and, or I should say the Sunday after 9-11. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was in a meeting uh, to help jumpstart our antique business. And a homeless guy ran by this restaurant saying, turn your TV on, turn your TV on, because they have bombed the World Towers. And the people at the restaurant seemingly knew him, and it was like, oh, if he's saying something, we need to turn the TV on. And there, there it was there. And so this was after or during 9-11? This during. was doing, during. this was actually a few minutes after they had okay, run so not the, the Sunday first, after. No, okay. the Sunday is this. Okay, so you first are talking uh, about when yeah. you remember seeing... Right, the, okay. yes. And I sit down that Sunday morning and I purposely sit down because I'm not a TV person. Uh, my father would not let TV come into his house. <laughs> so okay. I'm not a TV person. Yep. And I would lose a big contest on who movie right. stars is today. Excellent. Uh, but I purposely <laughs> sat down and turned the TV on and looked at it for hours at every religious program. Hmm. What was happening after? Yes. How, how everybody was And everybody yeah. in those mega churches were waving the American flag. Mm -hmm. Not one took a look at let's take a look at how this came about right what was our involvement what brought it forth and america to this day i just heard a report on npr 
And you know, the person who was interviewed brought out something really fantastic. And, and he said, you know, we never take a look at why the Iranians are so angry at us. And then he went into um, how in 1953, the CIA and the British intelligence overthrew the government of Iran. And we tend, we are the best sweep it under the world people in the world. And I think if we begin to take a look at the truth of why structurally are things so out of arrears, we constantly sweep it under the rug and say, okay, let's go on. Uh, we're going to do this. And it's the same thing has happened with the Native Americans. And you know, I, I sometimes get a little comical in dealing with clients, audiences, and what have you. Um, and just the other day, I had a young man with a, another group of people to sit down with me, and he's really young, and he has studied every shaman there is, ancient and present, and every guru, and he has all their theory. And then he slipped up and said, you know, I think that I was a Native American in the other life. I said, young man, <laughs> what is your ancestry? And he rattled it off, strictly European. I said, you know, I'm going to send you back home to wallow in who you are. You can't help anybody until you first help yourself. And I want you to go back and to the good of when it was good in Europe. And that was a time. So I might send you past World War II. I might send you past the French Revolution. I might send you way back past Constantine into the uh, land of the Celts and even before. But I want you to understand, until you glory in who you are, you really can't help others in who they are. Otherwise, you're working out of guilt. So there's this uh, theme and what you're saying that I hear around when you're victimized and also when you, you terrorize someone else. Looking at yourself, both, because you mentioned 9-11, which was in essence we were victimized, or we or the U.S. was victimized. And then you look at, okay, slavery and that whole thing, and that there was like, okay, look at, look at white people who took black people as slaves. And that was victimized, that terrorizing. Look at both sides. Like, that's what you happen to say in that and, whole arc of and story. Thank you. I because have, it's really about looking at yourself on yes. both sides of that, that we are both victim and we are yes. both the ones that terrorize and that at other times like speaking of you were mentioning earlier about Egypt and you know at different times different races were able to use another race to be able to build or do whatever cheap labor whatever they needed you know at different times like whites were slaves at a different time you know like in Egypt the Jews were slaves and were they so, okay, tell, right. <laughs> talk to me. Let's go back to the victim, victimization. Okay. First, and, and, and then, then uh, maybe, maybe we'll get an, into. <laughs> that's another. Yeah. Another time. Um, but I would say that's really good because uh, I wrote a piece about the victim, how a victim become a victim, and, this and is, how an yeah. oppressor become yeah. an oppressor. Right. How is it that you hmm. can victimize somebody? unless the only way you can victimize somebody is you've been a victim yourself, okay? And I, I, work, I named this, Americans Love the Tale. The Tale. They never, they never like dealing with the head. They love that stinking tale. <laughs> ha! 
the dog I was looking for. Okay, okay. and okay. basically, as long as we stay at the tail, we're only dealing with the symptoms. We're not right. dealing with the causes, dealing with the solutions. And what I used in that piece is, I had to understand who the European was, who came out of Europe. And as I told my mother when I was 11 years old, I'm going to Europe, Mom. And she said, why? And I said, I have to go there and understand how the European came out of Europe and wrecked havoc over the whole world. Now, I knew this. You want to know how I knew it? Because my some of my sisters were away in college. I had gone through all their high school books, <laughs> all of their college books, and when they came home and finished this year, I read the whole thing, okay? And my thing was, it was a research for the rest of my life. And by the time I was 20, I was in Europe. And I tried to learn everything I could. Hmm. And one thing that I came up with is that the only way that the Europeans could have come out of Europe and, and we don't even have to start with Africa first because they did it all at the same time. Uh, when Columbus reached America, yep. Yep. you know, and I got some of this from the great Zen people history of, of the world. Uh, Dr. Zen said the first day, and, and I added some things, the first day Columbus was in America, uh, Columbus uh, committed 27 felonies. 27, the first day. Here, the people of the country that they landed came out with all joy, dancing, bringing them fruit, food, and everything. They began taking those people captive, made them slaves, raped them, and if you just go down the line today, he would have been put in the federal pen, okay? So how is it that a people who come forth upon pure souls, they are offering you their everything, the Native Americans did it. When they went to Africa, the Africans did it. Opened themselves up. Here, they, Columbus, and all of the other European, the conquistadors, started ravishing right. whatever. So were they victimized? And so then those that victim, like well, that's the whole... I will tell you. Yeah. Because why would they come here for a thousand years and have that like do that to these people? Well, when... because they in leaving Europe, mm. they were the only people mm. on the face of the earth who were trying to leave their continent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it must have been damn bad. OK, for a thousand years, <laughs> the Europeans had controlled mm -hmm had suppressed, had oppressed their own people. Mm -hmm. If you go back and you know, um, in the history books that I read when I was a boy, it was a certain thing as the dark ages right. and the middle right. ages, right. okay? Right. And all of a certain, by the time I got to college, it had changed, hmm. it slowly changed. You don't hear anybody talking about the Dark Ages. It was called medieval times. <laughs> okay? But let's really go to the Dark Ages, which to me was instituted uh, by Constantine. And Constantine started <laughs> okay. a time of 
of creating Christianity. Yeah, turn to me. And Constantine, and, and from that time on, especially by 400 AD, um, until around 800 AD, was considered the Dark Ages. There was no progress. They were living in all type of debauchery. There was great oppression. So, and, and it didn't stop. Uh, in some countries, they, uh, uh, they created uh, the serfdom system, serfs. They, and if you research the word sl serf, or research the word slav, it is slave. So they made their own people slaves. So basically, I bring it to today. If I don't know something, I can't do it. Okay, if I'm not familiar, then I deal with my familiar. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, people knew that when they would come to my hometown, they might be coming to stay or relocate, didn't have food, what have you. And my community, if they hit my community, they were told certain houses to go to. And one was go up to Robert Zachary's house because they knew that my parents would take care of them. That's all my parents knew. That's all we knew. So what I'm saying is what the European knew coming out of Europe, that's what they continued. Um, and so basically, I had to understand the advent of slavery of Africans. Uh, they had tried it first with uh, the uh, Native Americans and right. uh, uh, down in South America. Uh, it, it's, it's very hard to enslave a people on their own land at this time uh, because there were thousands upon thousands who chose death. They just ran into the sea or ran up in the mountains and, you know, we rather die. This is our land given to us by our creator and we're, we're not going to succumb to your, your system. Right. So, basically... I'm saying that true diversity, true culture diversity is um, not so much a look at others, but a look at self. A, in order for me to progress, to elevate, to, to transform, I have to deal with looking at what I do. Uh, uh, and then I can go branch off to my family and what have you. And so you have people running around talking about, oh, I want to help the world. It's a balance. It's not a dichotomy, as you spoke about. It is, in order to help the world, let me help myself. Let me become familiar with help. Allow me to, to I, I have to first know help. Right. Within myself, within my own world, before I can know help out there. Right. Um, and and I, I think this is one of the reasons why we move in the same manner as we have moved, especially Americans, for the last few hundred years. Um, it's, it's nothing complex about what the powers that be do. You can almost know firsthand when they make a move, you know it's going to be a move against the people, not only the people, the elements, the earth, mama, it, because they've been doing it for centuries. What we need to concentrate upon in this day and time is how can we transform? How can we go back into our originality, our original community originality. And I think this is what people are asking. So, and then what is originality? Like break down uh, for Originality people? is how we were when we first started. And what does that look like for you? 
uh, what does that mean to you? The ancients, like so before the city what states that, so and what have you. Okay. It took so thousands of years to come up under city states. It right, was, right, not that, but like just explaining yes, what originality. Right. What would that lifestyle look like? What would what would interactions uh, between human beings? What would the life? Yeah, it is is. What is it like to be okay in that original? State? Where I'm coming from is we have been taught history linear yeah, yeah no no yeah okay all right go, go. we've been taught yeah linear oh, wow. you'll get me saying my portrait um, <laughs> uh, we've been taught linear history is that right. from the beginning here right. if you want to deal with uh, adam and eve right. or evolution right. it's been a straight line yeah i totally throw that out i yep. did a presentation before some middle school students and i said no History is an egg. <laughs> My friend would love that. And a spiral. History is an egg. You can turn it any kind of way. Mm -hmm. It is a spiral. That is it. That is the way we were created. We came out of a spiral canal, as we say. Don't get me saying the word I really want to say. <laughs> okay. But we were That's in okay. that spiral mm -hmm. room, mm -hmm. womb. <laughs> if you look at a pitch of a womb. And how we and, come out, too, we spiral and, out. Yes, we mm -hmm. spiral. Everything will start. So when we began, we were at our highest point. Mm -hmm. And we, it has been circular. We have gone. I heard, I, I wished I could find this minister. I heard a minister one time talk about, and he was the only one that Sunday who really brought out about the causes of this. And he said, you know, we started out in gold, crystals, okay? And he said, we, and then we went to silver, and then we went to bronze, and, and, and if you look at it, we call it the Bronze Age and all like that. And he said, we, now, you, you know, we've gone so low, we're in mud. We're standing <laughs> in mud. Okay. <laughs> now, the only thing that you can Tar. do when you are at your lowest is to go back to it. And that's what's happening. I know it might not look like it, but we're going back yeah. into the community beings that we were created as. Before the city states, we were communities. We were tribes, we were clans, and we, we, we didn't fuss, we didn't fight. You know, uh, I was reading uh, uh, something, in, you, you know, uh, when I was a child and uh, talking about cavemen and cave people mm -hmm. and what have mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the first ancients, and, and, and they always, you what? always looked, and they always had the spear. And it was always determined, this is what they fought with. They didn't know what they were talking about. They did not fight with that spear. That was hardly any fighting, because why would I fight if nobody owns the land, if there's no private property, <laughs> and everybody in a community, in a clan, is going to eat? What are we going to fight for? That didn't start until the city-states, okay? So basically, we are working to get back to and where that, we started, and that's what, that's what I, that I'm, I'm saying right. is the now. The communities that take yes, care of each other. Right. That we don't compete against each other for anything because no one that is owns it. anything to compete right. against. Now, in the worst of times, I think about what was... Who was it? Charles Dickens, who wrote uh, 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 Tale of Two Cities. And he started out, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. That's who we are. We are balanced. When you are in an unbalanced position, the worst is blown up. But as I say so many times, all this chaos going on out here. Right. All of the upheaval in the world and people dying, people being put out of their land, everything. You can just go on for the next few days. But I tell you, I tell you, it's more good in the earth than bad, even at this time. Okay.
Let's believe in that. It's more good. If you think about it, the news on TV is only 30 minutes. Right. And they be digging to get all the bad, but it's 30 minutes. And the world has lived in that day. And if you match all the good that has been done in the earth, it four outnumbers the bad. Okay. And this is why I say we're going to win. Okay. Because basically, with all the good, and when I travel over this country, and I was just down in Alabama the other day, and we saw in this small little town in nowhere, just a little country store, and you know what the, the name of it was? No, they had a sign, Organic Seeds. Mm. We're gonna win. We went to the next town and it had just out of nowhere, mm -hmm. yoga. Mm -hmm. I first mm -hmm. began to understand this. I was in Tennessee at the 500 mile long flea market sale. And I, I, I would spend weeks there. And I met this white guy and we just loved each other and we talked all day and he said, you know, uh, my community, he said, uh, we own solar energy. And I'm looking at him and he was just a whole bluegrass, you know, mm -hmm. Southern, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think just down home white guy and all like that. He said, come on, let me show you. And he took me to just normal houses. And he said, that's my house. And covering his house was not solar panels. His whole house, the roof was covered with copper wiring. Wow. And he invited me in and I spent the night. He said, I got the best hot water ever. <laughs> I, I, I cool my house. I heat my house. We do everything with uh, sustainable energy. Right. And we haven't gone to the store and bought anything, but just basic stuff. Right. He had all kinds. Of, that is hope. These are ordinary so, right. Americans, right. but living totally off the grid, weren't pushing an occult or anything. He was a first class, old time Baptist and what have you, right. but it gives you hope. I was that goes back to something you said when you said, okay, we were go I was going through and I'm seeing these things happening. This last question I know is you said yoga yes. because we spoke about yoga before. Yes. So you and when you when we spoke about yoga before, what you said was also reflective of how people um, in this country are are trying to to integrate yoga, like you know, because there is one aspect of it that right. seems like a cult it seems like something that you know it, it involves belief systems it involves things that can separate people and then there's this other aspect to it that you were talking about and so what to speak to like why do you mention going back to our original state has to do with something and what you meant when you said yoga because you know we have done nothing in this country but commercialize the healing arts. That's what I call them. Exactly. It's so amazing what we've done. It, you know, Ow. look, people were massaging, doing yoga, Reiki, all of them yeah. at the beginning. Right. And there was right. no charge. You would go to the shaman, the guru, the priest, what well, have we you. We would do it for each other. And, and we would do it for more. each other because we knew our bodies, right. you know, they've yeah. talked about yeah. how, you know, they were doing surgery on the brain right. way right. back, okay? Right. Because we were using uh, uh, the powers that be, say, you know, the researchers and all like that. And it, I always raise the number. They say that, you know, we were using um, um, almost 20% of our brain. I totally disagree. Where did the 33 come from? We were using 33% of our brain. You know what 33 really mean? 100%. Right. 
exactly. Because Actually, when you look at sacred now. geometry, yes. Right. No, but okay. there are that they've now been, yes. because they weren't studying them engaged. Right. The Thank minds you. engaged. Once you have everything going, your whole hey, entire thing, that, then it's of course. Yes. So they weren't taking into right. account the movement. And so, cerebral. you know, you have young people and this started in the 60s and 70s and when I was a black hippie and oh you know Hindu and uh, the Tibet and all like that look it was the world over it was everywhere everybody knew healing and you took care of the healers and and the church you know I I I, I got on this because much of what we believe in, even if you're judo Christian, whatever, it was all the same. Uh, if you look at tithing, tithe, and and this is why you know I I I I don't believe in the ten percent and all like that, because it was for a purpose. You okay? Yeah, I was just. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, the tithe system came out of being able to take care. Yes, of the priest first, and then the people. It was a balance. And when you look at how it's being done, and this is why I'm not encouraged, and a lot of people call me in as a consultant, and they have this glorious idea, oh, I want to start a school, and this and that. I say, hold up. You know, you're really talking about commercializing again, and Thank this you. is that's destroying right. us. Is that yoga in that way? And that's what I would have answered that you too. Know, it means union. It's just another word thank you. for the same thing. And it, it it was not to be processed in some financial gain. Actually, if you had come up with some kind of uh, plan or scheme uh, during the time of the ancients, uh, you, you would just be put out of the system, out of the society. That, that was it. They would disown you. All right, good. Okay. This is good for now.